Hey my draws, welcome to my video. In this video, I'll be going over some steps and tools that I used to create this painting. I used Photoshop, but you can use any software of your choice. So let's get started. So first I start by creating basic shapes using the pen tool and creating the top of the mushroom house and then the bottom of the mushroom house and just plotting down the basic colors. So I'm using the direct selection tool from the tool panel and just adjusting the anchor points from the shape to make them really even and make them perfect. Now I'm going to make masking layers. You can do that by holding option key and then holding the layer that you want the next masking layer onto. Just plotting out some basic lights and shadows. For the detail colors, I'm using a very light yellow for the light. And then for the shadows, I'm not using black because in realistic drawings, you will not see black. Or you will see a darker tone of the basic color or the mid-tones that you're using. So I'm using a very dark reddish color to really bring out the shadows. So for an extra touch of detail, I'm using some spots of different colors, lighter tans and light colors just to give more texture. So for the highlights, I'm going with solid white lines instead of a very blended realistic look. I really like this kind of style. So now I'm creating the door. Again, I'm using the exact same steps that I used before, creating basic shapes using pen tool and then filling them up with basic mid-tone colors and then creating a masking layers on top with different textures. And again, with the doors and the door panel, you have to be careful with the lighting direction and the shadows and the source of the light is the same. If you notice in the highlights, you see a swirly line I tend to do that a lot. This is just a personal preference. At the left side, there's already a mushroom house drawn before that I'm using as a reference for this one. That one I actually created before and it's just for my experimentation and I ended up liking it so I used that one as a reference for this one. That one, if you notice, don't, doesn't have a door because I was just like, I don't want that door, I just want the window. So um, I'll use it as a backside of the other house. In this painting, I'm mainly using a two-step workflow first by creating shapes and then creating multiple masking layers, I think well above 70 at this point. Um, Photoshop can be very intimidating to start on and I would suggest experimenting with different tools, but pick out a few that works for you and you're comfortable with. For instance, I'm using basic round brush with opacity and pressure sensitivity that comes with the general brush panel. So now I'm creating some accents mushrooms for the houses. They are going to be a very small to mid size range and they're going to follow the exact same shape language and the exact same color theme that the main houses are. So they both look cohesive and just a part of the whole picture. So moving along, I have inverted the house and the mushrooms over to the right to the left and flipped it horizontally i did that because i'm comfortable drawing at a certain angle and then i usually flip my object and it's a lot easier for me and this is actually really nice a hack to really realize that if you have done any mistakes at a certain angle or if you're one heavy angle um, drawer flipping the canvas will allow your brain to recognize some of the mistakes that you have done so in order for you to give it a fresh canvas to your eyes just flip the canvas horizontally 90 degrees now i'm just creating some surface shadows for the mushrooms on the main house i have realized that when I look at many other videos, I have not seen people using the shape tool, which is okay um, because um, as a painter, you do everything with scratch. But I believe that if you're using a software and if there's a tool provided, make sure to use it if it's for your style and if you feel comfortable. So for the background brush, I'm using a leaf brush that you can find in the special effects brush panel of Photoshop. All these brushes that I'm using in this picture and in this video are actually a package brushes that come with the software. You don't need to create or install or download a special brush from anywhere. These are all the default brushes that come with the software. So continuing, I'm going in and drawing the grass and using multiple shades of greens as I mentioned before. Um, this is where the color picker tool is very handy because you can go in and pick the surrounding shades of the greens or any other color that you're using. In this case, going in in the color panel and picking out the color again and again can become really repetitive and redundant. Using a color picker tool is way more efficient and easier to work with. I didn't record drawing these rocks because as you will see ahead in the video, I will change the shape and the lining so I assume that these ones are not worth recording so please bear with me and ignore them here right now. 
Another great tip you can use is that you can tweak the color and the hue of the color in the adjustment layer panel. If you're not satisfied with the color that you have picked, you don't really have to scratch and repaint the whole thing. You can just click on the layer that you have laid down the color, use multiple layers, this is when you can do multiple things and fix your mistakes. So click on the layer where you have put on the paint and go in the adjustment layers panel and pick out the layer where you can adjust color, hue and saturation. So this is where I go in and redraw the rocks because previously they didn't really look like a pathway. They just looked like random rocks on the road or in the forest as I'm going for a forest look. But here I'm adjusting the rocks to look like a more connective path. So I'm going with a more oval shape and a more structured shape and still keeping the previous ones as a side rocks but now I'm focusing more on a bigger pavement kind of look rather than a very randomized um, area. Background I used the glue that I used in the windows of the houses. In color theory and when you're making a painting choosing colors can be a really tricky point because some of the colors they look good but they don't necessarily go well together so if you like a piece that you have already created make sure to note down what colors what kind of colors or theme that you have used and used it across the whole painting that will make your piece more cohesive and more pleasant to look at. Lastly, I just plot down some basic colors and shades and highlights. There is no specific shape. Um, I was going through many trees in the background kind of effect, so I just drew some lines for the illusion that there are going to be many trees in the far background. So lastly, I would say is that when you're practicing your art, make sure that you make something that you feel good about and also try to find and try to practice something that's unique to you. For example, in my art and in my style, I really like to use solid white lines or lines in general and a cartoonish look mixed with realistic effect though it still does not look realistic but I really like that 3d kind of effect so that's unique to my style and I really incorporate these solid white lines because that's just me I like it that way but if you're using or if you're drawing a painting make sure that it's unique to you yes you can get inspired by your creative artist that you're following but try to make your art unique to your style and your personality So for the final touches and the final details, I'm creating another layer mask on the group of houses and on top of the overall image. And I'm setting that layer in the color dodge effect that will really give me the bright glowing light effect that I want. A bit of dark blue to give a purplish hue to the um, top roof of my two mushroom houses. So that's it for this video. If you like it, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Please go ahead and follow me on my Instagram and Facebook page. I will provide the links down in the description box below and the handles have been popping up during the video and also at the end of the video. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!